Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're back on the 2015 Outback Project car. Today, we've got a big box of parts and we're gonna start tackling all of the junk and debris on top of the engine. We're gonna be replacing our coolant crossover pipe O-rings and replacing our PCV union as there's leakage and debris on top of the engine where it looks like this stuff's been leaking for quite a while. We'll be changing out our coolant and our thermostat at the same time as we're opening up the cooling system might as well because again 231,000 miles and we don't know uh, service history on the car so might as well go ahead and replace it while we're in there doing that so guys with that said let's jump into this big box of parts get this Subaru Outback back up and running and back on the road So guys, we've covered this repair in the past. I'll link it up here in the top corner. So I'm not gonna cover it too in depth this time around, kind of a general overview. But really quickly, let's look at our new parts we have to install. We've got our intake manifold gaskets. We've got one for each side. That is a part number 14035AA68A. We have our coolant crossover pipe O-rings. That's a 8069330. We've got plenty of Subaru Blue Super Coolant. We've got our PCV Union Connector, part number 11821AA660. We've got a new PCV hose that runs from that connector up to our airbox silencer. That is a 11815AC67A. We've got a new water pipe that's on the other side of that union. That is a 21204AB240. And we've got a brand new thermostat, 21210AA260. Thermostat was sent to me by SubaruPartsDeals.com. Check out SubaruPartsDeals.com, your online retailer for genuine Subaru parts. Easy to navigate website. You can search by model, year, and trim, or you can simply type in your VIN number to easily find the parts you need for your Subaru or you can shoot them a call or an email and their staff will be glad to help you figure out what parts you need for your DIY Subaru repair projects. As a big thanks to you viewers, SubaruPartsDeals.com has offered up a promo code Mr. Subaru in all caps, good for 15% off shipping of your order. SubaruPartsDeals.com, a Subaru genuine certified seller of parts for your Subaru vehicle. Anytime you get ready to do any repair on your Subaru, check them out, price them out. They got some of the best prices out there on Subaru Genuine Part. So guys, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into it and start installing all these new parts and cleaning up the mess underneath this intake manifold. So guys, to start out with, we are draining our cooling system, just popped off the lower radiator hose at the thermostat housing, because again, we will be replacing that thermostat. And while that is draining out, we will go ahead and start taking off our intake tract and everything associated with removing this intake manifold. Now that we've got our intake box off, we can go ahead and disconnect our map sensor, take loose our PCV hose. It's already stuck on there pretty good and we just installed it like a week ago. And disconnect the electronic throttle control wiring harness. We'll disconnect our vacuum hose between the brake booster and the intake manifold. Looks like it's pretty well seized on there. Tuck that out of the way. So now we need to go through and disconnect the coolant hoses on either side of our throttle body. No worry of our hose pinch off pliers now as we're draining our cooling system.
Just pop those off. Go ahead and pop loose our fuel hose here off this holder. And let me get in here and squeeze our tab to release it. Be sure to release your fuel pressure before doing this or you're gonna get sprayed with gasoline. This car hasn't been driven in about a week and a half, two weeks as it's been sitting here while we filmed the repair video. So pressure should be bled out of the system. I say that, but I'm probably gonna get a big old gasoline surprise. Okay, so to uh, relieve your fuel pressure, you wanna take out your fuel pump relay or fuse and just run the engine till it dies, take all the pressure out of the system. So at the base of this quick connect fuel hose, there's little gray tabs on either side. You just wanna push down with the hose and push those gray tabs in, then lift up, which can be easier said than done. Luckily, as I said, the car has been sitting for a while, so no residual fuel pressure to worry about. Come up to the front of the engine, disconnect the electrical pigtail for the EGR valve behind the alternator. Or at least try to. Need to grab a 10 millimeter socket and Ratchet to remove the EGR pipe on this side of the intake manifold at the rear. Just like so. Now we need to remove the fasteners, two 10 millimeter headed bolts on either side of our fuel rail uh, protector plates and remove those. We need to disconnect our pigtail back here at the back of the intake manifold. Got another pigtail to disconnect under the intake manifold here, where I believe uh, EGR, or uh, not EGR, EVAP. Need to take our fuel lines loose at our rails. Got a little blue tab to push over, lock tab. And once the lock tab's out, you can pop the line up. And we'll just repeat this on the opposite side of the engine. Two 10 millimeter headed fuel rail cover bolts, fuel rail cover, and then pop up our fuel line to the rail, squeezing in the little tabs that are blue, a little flat head screwdriver in the front, pop it on through, lock tab released, pull the line up. All right, so I think I got everything disconnected now. Now we've got three 12 millimeter headed bolts on either side of our intake manifold removed. And we should be able to get it out of there. Just now remembering, I'm about to take this AC compressor off to get to the uh, PCV union because it's located right under the AC compressor. I should be able to fish it out of there without discharging the system. And uh, having to get my AC recovery machine out here. At least I hope so. So that is all of our bolts out. I 
Let's see if we can get our intake out, see what's left connected. I'm gonna snag on us. A good idea to take a blow nozzle and blow any crud off around the feet of the intake runner so you don't knock anything into the engine. Uh, since I already did that the other day when I was doing the uh, cam cover gaskets, not too worried about it uh, because I haven't driven the car since. It's just been sitting here. Get that out of there. We've got to wiggle our wiring harness around. think that we are free. And we are. That's where, ooh, let's dump fuel on the engine. All right, so now that we got all that out of our way, we can look at our nice dirt dauber nest we've got down here. We can look at our set it up EGR pipe and uh, just a general look of disgustingness. Everything is really bad under here. We're gonna get the uh, vacuum out and uh, vacuum this stuff up, get some uh, brake parts cleaner after it and uh, try to do some uh, housekeeping under here. So this is what we're working with. Lots of debris and buildup. Big old dirt dauber nest. Uh, EGR pipe. All kinds of mess. Coolant stuff from that crossover pipe. So yeah, a lot of cleanup to do. All right guys, so we got quite a bit cleaned up under here. Still far from perfect, but a lot better than it was. Oh yeah, I had to uh, unbolt the AC compressor. Totally forgot at the beginning to uh, mention that because uh, that PCV union is under the AC compressor. So all I had to do was take the belt guard off, take the wiring harness of the alternator and compressor off, snake it back under, take the serpentine belt off. We've covered that plenty of times. And there are, I believe, five 14 millimeter head bolts for the mount. Just pick it up and pull it forward. And uh, it should give you all the room you need to get to that union, our hose, the PCV hose on the right and the left coolant hose and now we're going to unbolt the crossover pipe replace the o-rings under there like we did on the impreza video tagged at the top corner earlier so just as we did in that video before we're going to take out the four 10 millimeter headed bolts that hold the coolant crossover pipe in place we're going to slightly lift it because the wiring harness goes across a bunch of other stuff's in our way so we're just going to slightly lift it where we can get that o-ring and uh, slip it out and slip the new one back under, bolt it back down. We'll be taking those two hoses loose and removing the three 10 millimeter headed bolts over here that hold that PCB union in place. And we'll be replacing all of that as well. So our two bolts are off on this side. A little crusty and corroded, which is uh, pretty normal for that uh, crossover pipe. When those O-rings start leaking, coolant gets on those bolts and starts to rust them out. Probably go ahead and uh, remove those hose clamps and the hose from the union, if I can find my hose clamp pliers. Just so we've got a little bit more movement in the coolant crossover pipe, because on the older models, this wasn't here. So you're able to move it quite a bit more and might just go ahead and cut that hose completely off of there. Let's 
So old crusted hose is off of there. Does give us quite a bit more room to work or maneuverability of the uh, crossover pipe, so to say. Go ahead and pull that PCV hose off the other side. Like you're going to cut it as well. Because it is hard as a rock. off of there while well, we're at it let's go ahead and uh, unbolt that union we'll go ahead and put our new hoses on to the new union and then we can slide the hoses on and bolt the union down once we replace the o-rings and bolted the coolant crossover pipe back down and this union is in uh, pretty rough shape I'll show you as soon as I get it unbolted here and let you see uh, some of the damage under the hose. There you go, you can see that hole there. You can see where there was some residue where it was uh, coming up around the hose this way, but probably was leaking back out underneath. And now we'll go through and dig out those O-rings and replace them. We've got a lot more mobility now. And there's one O-ring that is uh, nice and crushed flat. Breaking apart fairly easily, pretty brittle. Reach in here and get the other one. And our second one's out. Nice and flat as well. And just as brittle. Snapping to pieces. Go ahead and grab our brand new squishy Nice and round O-rings. Don't mind drawing your part number. And we will slide those into place. All right, so we got all that coolant blown out of that bore for our bolt to go down, blew our threads out, make sure that O-ring is set. Make sure that O-ring is still set. Run our four bolts back into place. Put just a little bit of oil on the threads. Protect them from rusting further. Aggravating thing about all this is I'm gonna have to come back and do it all over again on my 2013 cross track that my mother's driving now because uh crossover pipe o-rings leaking on it now seems that's becoming a common issue with these cars as they grow older but i mean 231,000 miles on this car 230,000 miles on my cross track 2013 and 2015 it's about time for uh sales and gaskets to start getting hard and brittle and leaking so Snug them down. We're gonna go ahead and put our new hoses on our new union and snug down those bolts as well. And then we will do our final torque on all of them together, which I believe is all the same. I think it's 6.4 Newton meters. So we've got our new union with our new O-rings. Got our two new hoses ready to go. Wipe off our ceiling surface one more time as we blew a little bit of debris around with the blow nozzle. 
And then we're gonna try to do this without looking stupid. Run the big fat coolant hose up on the barb. If I was smart, I put a little bit of oil on that hose or on that barb to help it slide up on there. But we got it up there anyway. Drop our three bolts back in. Snug them down. There we go. Let's try to get that big old hose all the way up flush. Although it's not 100% required. Even before it came off, there was a little bit of a gap. Let's get our hose clamp on there. And we are good to put our intake manifold back on as soon as we put those new gaskets on it. All right, 6.4 Newton meters set on the torque wrench. And that's all set. So now we can uh, bolt our AC compressor back into place. Check, make sure we didn't drop anything inside the cylinder heads and uh, replace our new, or replace our old O-ring gaskets for the manifold and go ahead and get ready to set it back into place. But uh, as I said, First off, we are going to drop our AC compressor back into place and bolt it down. And AC compressor is set. And there we go. Now all we gotta do is put that intake on. All right guys, double checked everything. Double checked our heads. Make sure nothing was dropped in sitting on top of the valves. Just uh, took a rag and some brake parts cleaner. Cleaned up all around the flange for the intake manifold. Gaskets to sit. Rubbing off this EGR pipe flange right now. Got our new gaskets in the intake manifold right here brand new gaskets are pushed in now just to 
guide the intake back into place. I'm getting around these uh, wiring harnesses and making sure we don't fold up or pinch our intake gasket. So that means we can go ahead and drop in our six 12 millimeter headed bolts and bolt our intake manifold back down. And then all we gotta do is hook up our little odds and ends. So we got a torque wrench. Torque wrench is set to 25 Newton meters. Go ahead and torque these bolts. Now that the intake manifold is torqued down, it's pretty much a free for all of plugging up everything that we unplugged and disconnected, like our fuel rails, wiring harnesses, etc. So guys, I believe we are all set other than that vacuum line. But uh, I think we're good other than uh, our intake, replacing our thermostat. All right guys, so two 10 millimeter headed bolts gonna be on either side of the thermostat housing. And hopefully not a giant bath, but Of course, I gotta pull the thermostat first for the cool it could come out. So we pull our housing down and uh, then we pull out our thermostat. And there we go. 
Note the jiggle valve. Jiggle valve facing front of the engine. Make sure the new one goes in the same way. Again, our new one. New thermostat ready. Plop it in. And throw your housing up there, tighten your two bolts. Now they got the housing bolted back up. Reinstall the lower radiator hose, move your clamp up, and we're ready to refill the cooling system. All right guys, time to refill the cooling system. So I guys filled up the cooling system with the vacuum filler. As you saw, got the loud spill free funnel in here. Got a little bit of cooling in there. Just gonna run it till we open and close the thermostat two times to make sure we are completely bled out of all air and we will be completely done with this repair. All right guys, and there you have it. Ran it with the Lyle spill free funnel on it, monitoring the engine coolant temperature with a scan tool. Waited till I saw two cycles of the thermostat opening and closing, making sure there were no more bubbles in the funnel. Shut it down. Put the cap back on, letting it cool down now. We are all done. Thank you once again to SubaruPartsDeals.com for sending me out that thermostat. My Subaru dealer couldn't get it. It was on national back order, but Subaru Parts Deals had it in stock and got it to me without any issues to get this repair done. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one.